Yeah. So I teach English as a foreign language in Italian high schools, and I consider um, the foreign language classes an ideal site to develop an intercultural awareness. Um, so interaction in a foreign language um, forces us to distance from what we take for granted of um, um, roles, attributions, and uh, uh, individual and collective identities, which are connected to our native language. And um, so during the years, I have been developing several modules um, using the foreign language as a space to, to develop an intercultural awareness. And um, these modules are usually structured on two levels. And uh, so there is a surface level, uh, which can involve grammar or um, uh, literature or the visual arts. And then the, there is another layer, the hidden agenda, if you want, that um, really uh, is meant to help students uh, develop an intercultural awareness uh, through um, a direct experience uh, rather than through a um, top-down lesson. And the unit I described for um, in the poster for, for, uh, for CID, for CID, uh, regards an activity that I developed several years ago. And the main task, the surface layer, was to learn the regular verbs in English through a um, contextualized activity which involved directly the students. And uh, in that case, the hidden agenda was to make students learn and reflect about their own stories and their family histories and how individual stories are part of collective stories that are determined by historic and economic and political factors. And um, all the stories that uh, came out were stories of migrations and uh, that also allowed us to, to find out some common threads between them but also to discuss critically some fundamental differences between past and contemporary migrations. Okay, so <clears throat> critical discourse analysis consider lang considers language as a social practice and considers crucial the context of language use and analyzes the, um, the role of language in reproducing or challenging inequalities. Thus, an important perspective in critical discourse analysis is the notion of power, which is about the relation of difference and the effects of such differences in social structures. And the effects of such differences are inequalities in access to material and symbolic resources. So um, critical discourse analysis reminds us that diversity often means inequality and that we should um, focus on the mechanism which reproduce inequalities and discrimination. What critical discourse analysis mainly shows is that social interactions do not occur on equal grounds. And so the link between critical discourse analysis and intercultural dialogue lies precisely in the notion of critique. Since also intercultural communication and intercultural dialogue as well um, do not occur on equal grounds. And what intercultural dialogue promotes is not the simple recognition of 
diversity. And we cannot approach, uh, um, for example, cultural misunderstandings, um, simply considering them as a lack of knowledge on a specific culture. And a critical approach to intercultural dialogue must address the historical, economic and political factors that have produced and still reproduce inequalities. And within that perspective, as I also mentioned in the post for CID, um, critical discourse analysis can also promote a critical approach to foreign language education, since another language can favor a reflexivity on um, language and language uses. Yeah, so I think that translation has very much in common with intercultural dialogue. And first of all, because they both suffer of the same wrong pre-assumption. Because in the general perception, um, intercultural dialogue is something that um, mainly, if not solely, regards the other. And the same thing happens with translation because translation itself is often considered something that only regards the other language. And uh, yet, um, as Umberto Eco says, uh, translation first implies a meta reflection on one's own language. And um, meeting other words first implies reflecting on our own words and how they shape our meanings and how such meanings are shaped by many, many different factors. And so translation is about moving from one system of cultural references to another, from what is familiar to what is not familiar and vice versa. And that is possible only through a critical apprehension of one's own cultural system of reference. And some years ago, I used translations to make students reflect on their own languages and dialects. So I asked them to bring in class a short poem or a song they liked in their own native language or dialects. And then we began translating them into English. And um, so while translating um, these poems and songs into English, the students realized that in order to reach English, in order to translate into English, they had to reflect on their own uh, languages. And they discovered um, hues and meanings that uh, um, they had never thought about before. And, um, they had never realized before. So that was also an exercise in interculturality, if you want. And then I think there is another aspect which connects translation and intercultural dialogue. Um, we never meet languages, but we meet words in context. The same word in a different context can uh, have a totally different meaning. And in a similar way, we never meet cultures, but we meet individuals belonging to different cultures. So translation and intercultural dialogue remind us that our encounters with words and with, with people are always situated and contextualized. <clears throat> 